Hi, I'm here to talk with you today about selling your IPS products successfully and making a success of your IPS safety business. As an independent uh, contractor, whether you're a salesperson or a distributor, it's very important to know how to leverage existing resources. Right? You might not have all the resources, but you can leverage them. And here are a few ways to leverage them. The first way is working with organizations. Organizations that work with seniors. Organizations that have big access, access to a lot of people or elect a lot of potential customers for you. And how do you do that? So let's say, for example, it's fundraising and you're talking to a sports club or a church or a hospital or a hospice or any group that wants to raise funds. They might want to raise funds for a trip, whatever it is, a school. Uh, this is the way to approach them, one way to approach them. You might say to them, I know you want to raise money. If I could show you a proven method to raise significant income for yourself, no cost, no risk to you. Don't carry any inventory. You don't have to collect any money. You don't have to distribute any product. You don't have to ship any product. You don't have to give any money out. All you do is promote a website. And I can give you the exact tools to do that at no cost to you. There's no money, no risk. Is it worth looking at? Would you be interested in looking at it? Right? If they say no, walk away. There's thousands and thousands of organizations that you can talk to. You don't need to talk to one. Right? There's many you can talk to. So think about that. You don't have to talk to just anybody. You want to talk to the one that is most important. The one that can make you the most amount of money. The one that is most valuable to you. That's the one you want to talk to, right? So how do you do that? Well, think about this. You want to give them what they want. And you want to lower any barrier to them. Right? So you're offering them what they want. Now let's say they don't want to raise funds. Let's say they want to make money. If I say to an organization that deals with seniors at home. They send out women or men that work with seniors at home. And that's a service that they provide. They drive seniors around or they, they nurse them at home or a senior's home that has seniors in the home. They want to make more money. They, they want to make more money. Believe me, <laughs> there's no question about it. It's a business, right? They're not doing it for love of people. They're doing it because they want to make money. And if you say to them, if I can show you a way to make more money at no cost and no risk, 100% bottom line profit, would you be interested? No inventory, no shipping, no collecting money, none of that. We do it all for you and we provide you all the tools that you need. Would you be interested? It's a no brainer, right? If they say no, walk away. Now, why would they say no? They might say no because you have no credibility with them. You might have no credibility with them. You might look bad. You might stink of tobacco. You might be badly dressed. You might not have shaved. You might present yourself badly. So it could be you right? It, it could be that they have some ulterior motive. It doesn't matter. But if you see everybody saying no, then we need to talk. Right? Then you need to contact me, Robin Elliott, and, and we need to talk. And we need to say, why is it that this is not working for you? Right? And if it's not working for you, well, then we need to find a way around that. So if you're well presented, you've got good manners, you make a, a, a presentation or you you share the opportunity with a decision maker. And here's how you find out if it's a decision maker or not. Are you the person that would make financial decisions for this organization? Now, they might not be, but they might be able to get you to that decision maker. And be careful because you don't want them doing the pitch. You want to do the pitch. So make sure you're talking to a decision maker and not somebody who thinks you might be competition to them. Somebody that's selling memberships in the seniors home for example might think well you're, you're you know you're going to take advantage of me or you're going to get my job or something a lot of employees have that that uh, scarcity fear mentality that you're going to take my job and you want to avoid those people so try to find somebody that doesn't have a vested interest in or doesn't think you're going to steal their job or, or take advantage of them and then say you know this is there's no risk to the company there's no risk to you who do i talk to who can you refer me to in the company that can make this kind of decision? And don't tell them what it is yet, because they might think they know. 
or they might have a buddy that sells cameras and things. So you would be careful. Now, if you're talking to the decision maker, remember, you don't need him. He needs you. There are thousands of them around. There's only one of you. Now, how do you make money? As a salesperson or as a distributor, we can arrange an override for you. So let's say, for example, we know that your commission, if you were to sell anything, you get 15%, right? If they were to sell it to somebody, they would get 10 and you would get 5. So we give you a special code that they can use, their discount code, 5% discount to the user, and they would get 10%. Now, if they buy everything and they use their own code, they're going to get 15% and you're going to get 5 does that make sense? It's, it's a 15% commission. If you buy your own product with your own code, you're going to get the discount of 5% plus your 15% commission, 20%. If they're going to buy it for themselves and resell it, they get 20% off and they can make a profit on top of that. So think about that and we can discuss it if that confuses you. But bottom line is you get a 5% override on whatever they do. So you're leveraging their resources, you're leveraging their connections and their power and their database. This is the, this is, this is the key to business, is leverage and collaboration. When you try to do it all yourself, you can only knock on so many doors yourself. But if you knock on a door that opens many other doors, well then you're using leverage, then you're working smarter and not harder. And that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So. The way you present this thing is important. You can show them how to make more money with no cost or no risk. This is net profit to them. And you can also show them how to raise funds. Both of them are really good. They work the same way. They get 10%. You get 5 You don't tell them you're getting 5 It's got nothing to do with them. You just tell them you're going to arrange for them to get 5%. Uh, sorry, 10%. And you're going to get 5 Now... How do you make money? As I said, you get 5%, they get 10%. If they buy their own product, if they buy using their own discount code, they're going to get 20%. Sorry, 15 because they're going to get 5% customer discount and they're going to get 10% commission. You're going to get 5% no matter what they do. The next thing is, um, what about privacy? This is something you're going to face. Now, when we registered, when we uh, incorporated this company, me and the other director, we had to get, the owners of the company, the two directors, we had to get licensed to do that. And we had to license the company. Why? Because they thought we would be installing cameras. In fact, we don't install anything, and nor do you. Who installs the cameras? The customer installs the cameras, right? We've got videos, and we've got instructions for them to do it very quickly. In a few minutes, they can, they can get the camera connected. And they can put it anywhere they like. It can stand on something. They can plug it in. They can use a power bar. Not a problem. As long as they have Wi-Fi. If they don't have Wi-Fi, a camera's not going to work on a smartphone. Right? We not. You know, I called a, 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 a local, very well-known, big uh, alarm company. And I said to them, what does it cost to put in one camera? I said, we don't do one camera. We do four. I said, well, if you just do one camera, how much is it going to cost me? $1,500. The cheapest alarm company that I could find to install a camera was $399. Right? That's a lot of money. So these cameras are affordable. They, we set them up, your, they set them up themselves. So you don't have to install cameras. You don't have to get involved with the product. We ship them the product direct to them, FedEx to, to them. They learn to use it with the instructions that we send them on the phone if necessary, and with the videos that they can watch. It's, it's, it's very easy to do, very easy. There's nothing to worry about that. It's very simple. So you don't have to carry, you don't have to um, deliver product or, or carry product, none of that stuff. Now, we do suggest that you have a product. If you've got a product, you know what you're talking about. You've got one around your neck, you can demonstrate it. Believe me, that sells. Just like in the other video I mentioned, Kirby, right? Kirby, when they sell vacuum cleaners, you see the vacuum cleaner working. It's not, there's no doubt in your mind that it can work or not work. It works. So the privacy issue, when they say, oh, but what about privacy? First of all, you're not doing anything. You're not coming in their homes. You're not doing anything. Secondly, it's up to them, the privacy. It's not your problem. It's not our problem. What they do with the camera, that's up to them. 
right? If they fear, oh, well, I don't want to film people, they'll feel that their privacy is being invaded. Well, that's between them and the customer. They can have, um, the, maybe they're confused, uh, concerned about uh, elder abuse. They're concerned that the caregivers are abusing the elders. Well, then they can get the caregivers perhaps to sign a document that says, I have no problem with a camera um, monitoring my, my activities. If they don't want to sign that, you know there's a problem. <laughs> then you know there's a problem. Wow. But they can have them sign a document. We don't deal with that. We don't supply them with documents. We don't deal with a privacy issue. If they're concerned about that, that's up to them. Talk to your lawyer. You know, that's not our problem. Um, if they are concerned about granny, let's say granny or grandpa uh, lives in an apartment and they say, well, we don't want to be able to see granny getting dressed. Well, then don't be an idiot. <laughs> you don't have to put it where she's getting dressed. Or she, you can tell her where to get dressed. And don't put the camera shining there where she, or looking where she gets dressed. Just think that through. You don't have to put it into a bathtub if you don't want it. On the other hand, we have a, a neighbor who has dementia, and her daughter actually comes and, and uh, showers with her so that she can get her showered and, and cleaned up. Right? So her daughter does that. So her daughter's, and, her, and her, she doesn't have a problem with her daughter showering with her. Her daughter's not going to have a, they're not going to have a problem with the camera. But they probably wouldn't let the grandson watch the camera, look at it on the camera. So you just have to, they got to think that through for themselves. But don't try to provide them with legal solutions. You're not a lawyer. Don't do that. You get yourself into trouble. And remember, you're an independent contractor. You don't represent the company. Right? You're working with us, but you don't represent us. So you don't have to worry about that. Here's the important thing about privacy. If they want something badly enough, they will find a way. Right, you, So when it comes to privacy, it's not our issue, but they can think it through. You can maybe help them to think it through, but be careful what you say. The other thing is, can they afford it? Now, this is a big, big problem. Here's the thing. If your toilet broke down in your house, you would find a way to replace the toilet. It's affordable. You would make it affordable. We have a big uh, thing going on in our apartment, going to cost $17,000. we will find the money. No matter what it costs, uh, no matter what, it ha what happens, um, you have to find the money for important things, and you will find the money for important things. If somebody really, really wants it, you'll be amazed. People can't afford to go on a cruise, but they really want to go on a cruise, they'll find the money. They'll borrow, beg, or steal the money, but they'll get it. If you want something badly enough, affordability is not an issue. And if you allow people to convince you that they can't afford it, you've got a problem. So I never let people convince me that they can or cannot afford something. How do I know that they can afford it? They buy it. But how do I make sure they're going to make sure that they can afford it? I'm going to make it very attractive to them. So one of the things about affordability is what would happen if you didn't have it? What would happen if you didn't have this tracker on grandma and grandma goes wandering and gets lost and falls in a river or gets mugged or has a heart attack and dies? Is it worth the money then? Think about what would happen if they didn't have the camera. Right? Like my wife's friend who two blocks away from us fell in her apartment, couldn't get up, couldn't get to the phone, called out, called out. Nothing happened. The dog was quiet because the dog was with her. No food, no water. Two days. Two days later, her neighbor actually got so worried that she got the fire department to break into the window on the third floor or the fourth floor, whatever it was, broke in through the window and rescued her. And they said, and she had to go to hospital for 10 days. She nearly died. They said, if you were there for another day, you would have been dead. So you can't afford the camera. Uh, can you afford for granny to die because you didn't want to afford the camera? And be careful how you put that. But the fact is, what, is it, what does it cost you not to do that? I once had to replace a water pump on my car. And guess what the fool asked the, asked the motor mechanic? I said, oh, well, what will happen if I don't replace it? <laughs> your, your engine will seize. What will it cost you to replace the engine? What will it cost you if you don't do this? And you've got to think about that. It might cost you a lot to replace something in your car if you don't do it. Or it costs a lot to have it lubed and you know, the oil change. Well, don't do the oil change. What's that going to cost you? Wake up and smell the coffee. So we've got to show them what it would cost them not to do it. And, and here's the thing. People will do more to avoid a loss than to gain a benefit. We know that's true. They will do more to avoid a loss than to gain a benefit. 
So show them the loss. Right? People are motivated by fear. So you have to build in a little bit of that. What would happen if granny fell and, she, and you wouldn't know? If there was a fire and you didn't know she'd left the apartment or not? That happened to us. We had to run upstairs to go and see if this woman had got out of her apartment, been helped. And um, luckily the door was open and I was running through the place looking for her and she wasn't there. Ran all the way down the stairs and there she was being helped by somebody else. If there's a camera, her daughter could have just looked on the camera and it can be a lot of people can see the same thing if they link it up and they can all look at the same app. So our products work. If you have a question, call us and ask us. If it's technical, call the head office. If it's sales and marketing, call me. But don't get stuck. Don't quit. Don't give up. Right? And in anything, it starts slow and then it builds up. How can you make more money faster? Refer a distributor to us. If you refer a distributor to us and that distributor goes ahead and buys his distributorship, if we accept him as a distributorship, as a distributor, we don't accept everybody. But if we do, you're going to get 10% of whatever he pays for his distributorship. Up front, one, one off payment. You're not going to get an override on what he does or anything. You're going to get a one-time payment. That's thousands of dollars. So if you want to make a few thousand dollars every month, just refer us one, one distributor every month. It's quite easy. <laughs> not really. It's not so easy, but you can do it, right? If you want to do something badly enough, you will. Always remember, if you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't ask, you don't get. You have not because you ask not. So the more people you ask, what did Paul J. Meyer said? Say, what's behind this door? I cannot tell. But this I know and know it well. The more I open, the more I sell. So there's a story about two salespeople, and um, the one was really sharp. He was beautifully dressed. He was good-looking, deep voice, unlike mine. Didn't have a thin nasal voice like mine with a weird accent. He had a deep, you know, he sounded like a radio announcer. He was a really great guy, good-looking man. He had hair, <laughs> good-looking guy, perfectly dressed. Oh, great guy. And he knew the product backwards. Oh, he was an expert in this product. And then you get the other guy. And the other, pro they're selling life insurance. Intangible, very difficult to sell. I've sold it in twice. And it's, it's not easy. I did well, but I can sell intangibles, but it's not easy. So here's this guy, perfect salesperson, selling life insurance. Then they take the other guy. He looks terrible. Oh, he's, you know, glasses are too big and he's just bold like me and he's got a weird accent like me and he's the funny voice and he's ugly like me. And oh, yeah. And, and this poor character. He's just a bad sales, doesn't really understand the product, bad communicator, halitosis, you know, think of it. So they've got these two guys, total opposites, and they set them up for a sales competition. <laughs> and they say, here's the thing, gentlemen, the one who wins, who makes the most sales in two weeks is going to win a car. Now, they knew what was going to happen beforehand. But these salespeople didn't know. And um, they said, okay, we start tomorrow. you got two weeks. You're not allowed to call on referrals. You're not allowed to call on people that you know. It's got to be strangers. And off they went. Well, guess who won? The ugly one with a, with a no hair and, and didn't understand the product. That guy, he won. The suave guy lost. And the reason was... The bad guy knocked on every single door and he started early in the morning and he went till late at night every single day. And you know what he asked when they opened the door? He said, hi, my name is John. You don't want to buy any insurance, do you? <laughs> you don't want to buy any insurance, do you? I mean, what kind of pitch is that? And guess what? He outsold the other guy two to one. Why? Because the other guy was overconfident. His ego was in the way. I'm not going to knock on that door. They don't look like they got money. I'm not going to knock on that door because they don't seem good enough. But he was judging, prejudging people and lazy and taking a long lunch and having tea and, and you know, taking his time and he working nine hours a day. I mean, why would you work more? In fact, most self-employed people work three hours a day. Scary enough. Right? But people that try and do uh, network marketing, most of them are working about three hours a day. And they can't understand why they don't make a lot of money. But the bottom line is, here's two guys selling insurance. The worst guy wins. 
because he knocks on a lot of doors. The more you, what's behind this door, I cannot tell. Don't prejudge. But this I know and know it well. The more I open, the more I sell. So go for it. Now, the, when I sold insurance, I went to a city where I didn't know anybody. I only knew my aunt. And uh, I got five refer five people to sell to. They were called orphans. Other people had sold them insurance. And there were more than five. It was all file safe that uh, you know filing cabinet that nobody had used nobody wanted to use it i used it they said well here's here's leads these people they they bought insurance and nobody saw i went i went five people and that's all i had to contact and when i saw them this is what i did whether they bought or not only three of them bought i said to them have you been happy with the way i presented myself to you and my product yes have you been happy with my courtesy with my manners uh, with my presentation to you and my integrity. Did, did, were you happy with that? Yes, we were. Now, part of my job is I have to get five referrals from each person I see. And I would like to know, who do you know who could benefit from using our products? For example, this is life insurance. For example, who do you know who's having a baby soon or has just had a baby? Who do? You, and every time you do that, the file opens up. Who do you know who's just got married or is getting married? These are all th times when people tend to buy insurance or increase their insurance or change their insurance. And I got five, on each one of these five, I got five referrals. And each one of those referrals, on average, I got five. Sometimes I got more, sometimes I got less. Sometimes I got none, sometimes I got more. But it averaged five. And that was my job. I set my goal five. So if you ask for referrals from everybody you see, and you open up those files in their heads by asking them the right questions, and you'll see that in your marketing manual, you will get referrals. And referrals are the best people to sell to. And how do you approach them? Hi, Jonathan. My name's Robin Elliott. You don't know me, but you know Peter Smith. And Peter Smith uh, said to me that he's pretty sure you might be interested in my product. Now, it might be for you and it might not, and that's okay. But I wondered if I could pop around and show you what we do. Take a very short amount of your time, not more than 15 minutes. And um, I wonder if you'd do me the courtesy of seeing me in behalf of Peter Smith. Something like that, right? It might be for you and it might not, and that's okay. Take the pressure off, right? You don't go in there, you want to buy. People don't want to be sold anything. They want to buy something. You can have a look at it and see if this is for you and maybe it's not, and that's fine. right? And if it is, that's great help you to become happily involved but i just need to ask you a few questions it'll take 15 minutes and maybe you qualify maybe you don't maybe it's right for you maybe it's not and it doesn't matter if it's not remember you don't have to worry about who buys you just have to worry about how many you present to the more you see the more you sell is it better to sell to companies and organizations and clubs or to individuals well, the potential is much bigger with organizations, companies, and clubs, but you might do better one-on-one. -on -one. You might be, do better giving talks to seniors groups. I do that. I, I give talks to seniors groups, and some will buy and some won't. The reason why I do is not to sell to the seniors. I go there to get connection to the person arranging the seniors talk. Because the person arranging it gets access to people. They trust her. They like her. That's the person I want access to. Because she can introduce me to the children of those seniors or to seniors who have a spouse who has a problem. And the same thing with schools, right? You might, you might be the parent of a young child or young children. Or you might have friends who have young children. That's a fantastic market for the cameras and for the same things that we sell for seniors. And any home, any business can use our wonderful cameras. They'll see in the dark. You can talk through them, talk back. It's a fantastic product. So if you have the products... And you can look on your phone and show them you're going to be 10 times more effective, believe me. And you're going to have credibility. You've got to be a product of the product, right? So I thank you for watching this video. And if you have any questions, you know that you can contact me anytime uh, within, you know, not, not in the middle of the night. And I am on Pacific time. So remember that we live in West Coast, Vancouver, Canada. Please remember... You know, 9 to 5, no problem to give me a call. If you need to call me after that, up to about 8 at night, not a problem. But, you know, just do me the pleasure. I don't work on Sundays. 604-785-2536 is my personal line. 
I look forward to working with you. I hope you have a great day and uh, or a great evening. And let's go and make a big future for you, a big financial future. Your success is our success. We want you to succeed. We will help you in every way that we can. Thank you for watching.